And one of the cool things that I do like um, with the uh, the tarot books, especially besides for for the amazing artwork and the stories, is the back of the book where you actually allow the fans to interact on a more personal level as well. Yeah, Jim really felt very strongly when we started the company that that would be a part of our book. That wouldn't sell advertisement or you know do other weird stuff in the back, except for you know have the readers join in. And I think that's evident in uh, the uh, the way your fans react to your work. The Project Fanboy Awards. I've seen you <laughs> and your company and uh, your company yourselves and your line at least three or four different categories. Best indie uh, artist, Jim. Uh, best indie title, Terror Witch of the Black Rose. I mean, it goes on and on. And these are from the fans themselves. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're very thrilled. Uh, we're very surprised and. You know, anything that our fans give us, whether it's gifts or, or votes, uh, we, we just feel so humbled because, really, if it wasn't for those guys, you know, we wouldn't be doing what we love. You know, we'd have to find other jobs. And uh, they are so much a part of Broadsword that when we do meet our readers, it's sort of like, uh, you know, family. And, and we just thank them so much because without them, Without them, no company can survive. And uh, I, I saw that when I was on Catwoman. I saw that when, you know, no matter what book I was on, uh, the devotion that readers have to a specific character, I think, is very important. And when Holly and I first started Broadsword Comics, we loved that, and we said, well, we're not going to shy away from that. We're actually going to celebrate our readers. I think that's because we ourselves grew up reading comics and I know that Red Sonia was very important in my life growing up so including Brigitte I'm Nielsen <laughs> and it's easy to embrace others of your kind <laughs> <laughs> um well you, you brought up um with, with starting the company and the and the positive feedback from the fans when you guys first started the company was there any kind of criticism that you guys took going into it where people might have said, how are you guys going to make it, or how do you, how do you plan on, on, on making it? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, no, I mean, because you know, personally, I mean, it, it, as an, uh, a personal individual venture, I mean, it's really risky. Yeah, we, well, I heard all that, too, and um, it's, it's very, very scary. Uh, when I started, I, I came off of uh, a, a well-known comic book. Uh, I had lots of readers who, who loved my, my Catwoman illustrations. And, you know, and I had an opportunity to jump on other major characters. Uh, but I, I decided to go this route. And I've had several people 10 years ago who supposed to have known this industry have told me that, Arrow, Witch of the Black Rose, will only reach three issues, that I will be broke and I will be looking for work. And to know that going in and knowing how much money comic books, uh, how much money you need to, to put out to print a comic book, it's very, very scary. So like 10 years later, I'm, I'm on issue 61, um, you know, there, I, I always believe, I always sort of have this fear that, you know, it can always go away. But there's a part of me, and I know Holly enjoys knowing that our fans supported us for 10 years. And uh, the risk was worth it because we're doing something we love. And uh, I'm really happy that so many readers love what we're doing. Awesome. Now, uh, real quick, to uh how about we get a little bit in, into the process of putting an issue together? I mean, because you guys are constantly working. Um, give me a normal wake up in the morning, and where do you start? Great question. I love that question because <laughs> Holly and I were so much scheduled people. Okay, here is our typical day, people. Um, we're up around maybe 8 or 9. Uh, we do our breakfast, our emails. And I try to make sure that I'm at the drawing board at 10 o'clock. Then from 10 to 12, I, I work. And then Holly is on the computer. Uh, 12 o'clock, we break for lunch. And it's usually maybe, maybe about a half hour long. Mm -hmm. And then from 12 to 3, we're back. We 
working, wherever we're doing. Uh, three o'clock, we take like a 15-minute break, which could be an apple. Yeah, just a snack. And then from three to five, we work. And then five o'clock, we eat supper. Well, I usually break around four. I cook dinner. I'm I'm very into cooking. I'm a big foodie, and I like to mainly cook organic. All right. Actually, we're we're, we're having a, a little bit of an issue with a lag with the phone. So we're gonna just take a moment, real quick, and see if we can get that back up and going. It's it's part of what happens. This is live radio. Yes. You, know, you never know what's going to happen. And as a reminder to our listeners, check out www.jimbalancestudios.com. Right. Uh, great website for everything you want to know about tarot. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking at it. It's amazing the stuff, the great tarot products you can get. Oh, yeah, totally. They've got a whole line of tarot fragrances. Yes. It's awesome. I, I mean, it really, really is. All right. We should be back online. <laughs> um, I find. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, we got we got so many calls at the point when you were talking about being a foodie that the lines just exploded. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, I, I do believe so. Is it my mother? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, what what else do you have? What other hobbies keep you guys busy? Because I mean, I I know you love your work, but but it, it it's got to drive you crazy if you're doing seven days a week in, in front mm -hmm. of a board or or a computer screen. Mm -hmm. Well, um, we're gamers. Uh, oh. You will find me playing rock band. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. Know. And um, we have a Wii, and we have a 360, and a PlayStation 3. Um, <laughs> so we have every platform known to mankind. So there might be some truth to the whole millionaire thing. <laughs> 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 I, I think uh, the new question is going to be then, how do you have time to do any work if you've got this many video <laughs> games? Because I wouldn't be doing anything. Oh, uh, no. I, I mean, it's it's like um, when I have a spare moment or something, or or you just really need to sing, you know? I mm -hmm. sometimes need to run in there and do Beatles rock band or something sounds good is there anything that you guys consider your little fanboy nerdism the, the, the one thing that you just love above all else um well i i have a couple of them it's not just one. Oh my oh. gosh yeah i'm a doctor who fan nice and i love harry potter i love star wars i i love uh, star trek um i love to cook so I, I am a big food geek, and I'm a huge Disney geek. Nice. Very yeah, good. Nice. Very good. It's, it's good to know your fan base by being one of them. Oh, yeah, because uh, every time we go to a convention, Holly always checks out what Star Wars actor is <laughs> going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> and I interview them. I have film. I wow. It. wow. Yeah, I asked David Proud what his favorite dessert was. Oh, get out. <laughs> Yeah, and then I tried to do karaoke with him that night, too. Almost. I wanted to do Summer Lovin'. Oh, yeah? Ooh. That would have been awesome. Wow. Um, now, you brought up Star Wars because, uh, Holly, you, you are a big fan, right? Uh, yeah. And, did, and, yeah. Did you see our wedding? <laughs> the, well, that's yes. where I was going to go. Um, yeah. First off, I was going to say, I, I was going to say whose idea was it, but I already think I may already have the answer. Well, it's funny because it was like right there in front of our face. Um, we were engaged in 1999 in the Haunted Mansion. And originally we wanted to get married there, but Disney had a problem with that. Jerks. Um, and then we started the company and we kind of got distracted. Um, and then I guess, uh, I don't know which Star Wars came out, and Jim said, and I was getting a Princess Leia uh, costume made, the, the slave Leia, and Jim said, well, why don't we have a Star Wars wedding? I was like, oh, duh! <laughs> <laughs> I'll wear this bikini! <laughs> and then Jim was having uh, Darth Vader armor made, so I'm, I know this sounds weird, but I've always liked Darth Vader. Cool. Um, Doesn't at all sound No daddy weird. jokes. <laughs> oh, we... no, I did not make a daddy joke at any point. Ken's going to lie right now and say that I did. Uh, as untrue, I understand that uh, <clears throat> the entire Star Wars trilogy is, is bathed in incest. It's all right. It's <laughs> um, no wait. So, so was Jim's um, suit custom tailored? Oh yes, because I'm six foot three, and you just can't find armor or or capes or you know 